Hey guys, Doug here from Motion Raceworks, here today with another episode of Motion 360. And today we're talking about EFI and boosted fuel pressure regulators. It seems like there's a lot of unknown and a lot of questions about how do I hook up my regulator uh, as far as lines, uh, vacuum fittings, where to place it, what the proper placement is, and uh, position um, in the fuel system for your EFI fuel pressure regulator. Now we can go deeper into which one works better for your application, but it might be better if you just call us. Uh, seems like every um, situation is a little bit different. I can recommend some good fuel pressure regulators for different pumps, uh, but that's for another episode. But anyways, uh, when guys are building new setups, if you've never built an EFI system or if you've built an EFI system but you haven't built a boosted EFI system, the regulators seem to change a little bit and also how you hook them up needs to change. And I see a lot of folks doing it incorrectly. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, they just don't know. So that's why we've made this video to kind of inform people and hopefully you can get it right the first time and you don't have to buy all these expensive fittings multiple times and uh, have your fuel system work properly from the get-go. So right now, um, I'm standing in front of our LS1. We use this for mock-up at the shop. It's got a MagnaFuel setup and then also an Aeromotive setup. So it's modeled with the Holly High Ram intake, which is what a lot of folks use. And we make a couple mounts. Um, this Aeromotive mount will also take a mag the same MagnaFuel regulator and it mounts on either the passenger side head and we also have a driver side head option. Uh, this MagnaFuel version is really popular. It mounts off the top timing two bolts for timing covers. And we'll continue to come out with new uh, regulator mounts because it seems like it really helps folks as far as positioning and uh, giving a good idea. But you'll see that on this MagnaFuel regulator, the lines are coming from the in uh, th this end of the fuel rails and then into the sides. Um, and one of the reasons that we started making these mounts is it kind of encourages people to hook them up properly. So a lot of folks, uh, I see this argument or discussion all the time on uh, social media, and they'll say, well, I have my regulator hooked up before my rails. Um, first rule of thumb, don't do that. Uh, because what happens is you're only gonna have pressure uh, correct behind the regulator. So if you regulate the pressure and then it goes through the fuel rails unregulated, um, every time one of these injectors opens, the fuel pressure drops. Uh, so what happens is if you have a regulator back here, by the time the fuel gets maybe into the first injector, I don't have sensors to know, I haven't done tons of testing on it, uh, but it drops pressure every time a hole um, fires because there's nothing pushing against it. At that point, it would be going right back into your fuel tank. So there's nothing basically holding that pressure while that happens. So whether you run your feed lines into the front of the rails and then have the regulator after it. Uh, the regulator just has to come after the fuel rails, what, regardless of orientation and how it's plumbed. So for our um, descriptive purposes, most of the fuel systems, what we do is we have a number 10 or number eight uh, line coming up from the back of the car, uh, from the fuel pump and the post filter. And what we do is um, on our combos, we always hit them with a Y uh, and split them into two number sixes or two number eights that go into the back of the rails. Um, this is just a really natural way of hooking the lines up and plumbing it so that it flows properly and just lays out well in the engine bay. One thing I hate is an engine bay that has lines like draped over here and over here and regulator over here. So I always try to tuck the regulator up front or down low and in, underneath the intake just so that it kind of minimizes the amount of lines because that's also like a safety concern. If you have a turbo setup and you have lines all over the engine bay and the heat starts to affect them, um, they can get brittle and crack and leak. Uh, they can also catch fire and then you have all kinds of stuff. So this kind of protects everything and keeps everything where it needs to be. So we run the fuel in and then it comes out of the front of the rails into the regulator. So now everything um, behind that regulator is properly regulated with pressure. Uh, if it's not regulated with pressure and the pressure got low, you can go lean on the cylinders where it gets low. So that's why we do it. Um, this is a fuel pressure regulator we sell a ton of. It works really well with the MagnaFuel 4303 and 4703, uh, as well as a bunch of other pumps. Um, you'll notice that there's a set screw on the front of this pump. Um, and what this does is you'll put a gauge right here or a sensor. And when you first go to start your car up, you're gonna set that at 43.5 or 58 PSI, whatever um, either the factory ECU was programmed for or whatever you wanna set it for. 43.5 is what most fuel injectors are rated at. So if you set this at 43.5, it would theoretically give you the same flow numbers that you would have when you got your injectors. 
Um, you'll also see a vacuum port here. So this is a boosted EFI regulator, which means it's got boost reference coming to it. So you will connect this line to the intake plenum somewhere. And what that will do is it will reference whether it has vacuum or boost going to it. So for every pound of boost, it's gonna add one pound of uh, pressure to the top of the diaphragm. Uh, fuel pressure regulators are built kind of similar to a uh, wastegate if you watched our last episode on wastegates. There's a diaphragm in here and that just increases and decreases pressure. So every pound of boost you have, you need another pound of fuel pressure to overcome the forces uh, from the cylinder in theory. So, which is why we do a one-to-one -one reference boost reference regulator. Uh, so if you have 43 pounds of base pressure and you put 30 pounds of boost, you're gonna need 73 pounds of fuel pressure, plus or minus. It's never perfect, uh, but it gets it closer to where the fuel system isn't having to uh, have longer uh, open times on the injectors to compensate because you can only open it for so long. So, um, but anyways, at least on this setup, what we do is uh, there's a rear port here in the fuel pressure regulator. So after it comes into the sides, it's regulated there. And then this return line goes back to the tank. Um, one of the things I get questions about a lot is what size return line should I run on my uh, setup? And the answer is as big as you can run. Um, I mean, within reason, what I tell people is like on a typical LS setup that's 1,000, 1,200 horsepower or Coyote or what have you, uh, I always like to see people run a number 10 because what that does is it allows you to get the fuel off the back side of the regulator so that the fuel can get back to the tank. If you don't get the fuel off the back side of the regulator, uh, the regulator can't regulate and make changes fast enough or accurately because it's working against different forces. So. I mean, you just want that ho that fuel to get back to the fuel tank as fast as proper as as possible. And what that'll do is it'll also put less stress on your fuel pump because if your fuel pump's working against a brick wall, it's going to have to really turn to keep pressure up and keep pumping fluid. Versus if it's free flowing after the regulator, it's just doing what it has to do to keep going. So it's better on fuel pump life. Uh, it'll heat up the fuel less as a result and also it'll regulate the fuel a lot better. So we make a couple different brackets, uh, like I said, and um, we also make one that goes on a 4150 or 4500 throttle body 90 degree elbow, and uh, that works on the sides or the rears. And I'll post links down below in the description so you can kind of get an idea and see those. Um, but the main uh, point of concern is that the fuel always goes into the rails first and then out to the regulator next. Um, the next question that comes up often for us is, what if I go in one rail, around to the next, and then out, and then regulate it, or however you wanna orient that. And I always tell people don't do this because, um, but then I get the argument, well, that's how the stock is. Well, the stock's not demanding what uh, uh, high performance and boosted applications doing. Uh, they can get away with it, it's engineered, it's designed, the pump's big enough, uh, they know that it flows enough there. Um, the problem what happens with a boosted application is when you start looping these lines, uh, let's just hypothetically say you're going to turn that car up and see how fast you can go. Well, what you didn't realize is that you miscalculated fuel, and so um, these four cylinders here get plenty of fuel. By the time it takes a loop and comes around here, your fuel pump has run out of fuel when it's at wide open throttle making 40 pounds of boost. So now these last four cylinders are just getting what's left in that fuel rail in the loop because this, these four have already stolen all that fuel. So what's gonna happen is these last four cylinders stand a really good chance of burning up and going way lean. And it works on a lot of combos. The biggest problem is uh, nobody remembers that. And when you go to lean on and max out your fuel system, that's when it goes really bad. Uh, I would say the only time that, th that running a fuel system in a loop like that is when you have just some enormous uh, mechanical fuel pump where you're never, ever, ever gonna run out of fuel. Uh, those guys can get away with it. And in fact, I think they do that a lot to keep up pressure in the system. Um, but for most of us, we're kind of always teetering on the edge of not enough fuel, especially with these electric fuel pumps and these big, crazy turbocharged combinations. We're always seems like we're pushing fuel pumps limits. And uh, that's just gonna cause you a whole lot of problems. So for a few extra bucks, why it before and then after? And at least what that's gonna do is the whole motor will kind of start to fall off um, and it won't just be a couple cylinders because what would happen in this case is this bank would show fine on wideband, this one wouldn't. Or when you're 
basically what you're doing on most turbocharge applications with a single O2 is you're averaging eight cylinders. So if these four are looking good and these four are just okay, these four might be really lean and these fours are really rich and everything's uh, kind of going wrong and you're still beating on this thing because you're like, eh, it seems like it's keeping up, but you're really running some real dangerous cylinders. So that's why I always plumb a Y in and then both out to the front of this regulator um, and then back to the engine. Uh, one thing I'll note about this uh, aeromotive regulator or any regulator you're mounting to the front of an engine, uh, always put some insulating uh, washers. We have these uh, phenolic spacers um, and what that does is it just keeps the heat transferring right from the cylinder head into that mount because you'll just heat up fuel. So while we're talking about heating up fuel, uh, let's talk about um, what causes fuel to be heated up. A lot of times it gets blamed on um, the regulator or the pump. Uh, but real quick before this video is up, a lot of where your heat comes from is your lines draping across the engine bay. Uh, this header is putting heat into this line, which is now going back into your full fuel system as the fuel gets returned often because these pumps are moving so much fluid. Um, another thing is uh, Anytime you have aluminum touching aluminum and this, this intake's getting hot, it's just gonna turn this uh, fuel rail into a heat sink, basically. So a lot of times fuel is getting heated up there. So anytime you can use a phenolic spacer for the fuel rails, go ahead and do that as well. So another little tip that uh, we found out the hard way and a couple customers have also reassured us that this is common. On these aeromotive fuel pressure regulators, they have a number uh, 16th inch NPT. A lot of guys will either drill them out to eighth inch or they will find their own 16th NPT fitting. That's fine, um, especially if you're doing a push to keck, you're gonna want a new fitting in there rather than a barb style one that it comes with. The problem is if you thread this too deep into this housing, there's a spring that floats up and down in here uh, for the regulator. If you thread that in too far, it's gonna actually push the spring or pinch the spring and you're gonna have constant high fuel pressure. I get this call a number of times a year. Um, so be very cognizant. If you have to, just take this regulator apart after you screw this fitting in. Make sure it's not impeding that spring moving up and down. That can cause some pretty bad stuff to happen. So that's a good point to pay attention to. We get a lot of calls about it and uh, it can really keep you scratching your head. So as far as regulators go, um, if, like I said in the beginning of the video, if you have questions on how to properly size your regulator or lines, um, definitely give us a call at Motion Raceworks. I'll put our number in the comment section below, or description below. Um, we're always open. Our website is motionraceworks.com. We carry a lot of this stuff in stock. We do a lot of custom layouts for fuel systems. So if everything in this video makes sense, but you still don't want to plumb your own fuel system, uh, we can go ahead and build you a fuel system based off a napkin sketch. We do it all the time for customers, bag it, label it, shows up, it's easy to put together. Just kind of a free service that we do for folks. Uh, so when you're ready to do your fuel system, definitely give us a call. Uh, so a couple of key takeaways. Why the lines before they go into the rails, the regulator go, always goes after the rails, whether it's after the rails in the back or the front. The fuel always goes through the fuel rails before it goes to the regulator. Um, your vacuum port uh, boost reference is always a good thing to hook up. We always run a quarter inch uh, push to connect line, so it's a quarter inch OD. Uh, that's proper size to get enough airflow um, to operate that thing. Um, also, I've seen guys hook up a number four AN line, that works as well. And then obviously rubber hose. You just wanna be careful that your rubber hose isn't a real flimsy vacuum hose that can suck uh, shut or kind of expand real bad in balloon. Uh, that can be an issue too as far as moving your regulator around. So anyways, uh, this has been another episode of Motion 360. I hope I filled you in on fuel pressure regulators in relation to EFI and boosted applications. I appreciate you tuning in. Stay tuned. There's more to come.